Hey guys, welcome back to Andrew Invest. Today I wanted to talk about Netflix and its recent earnings in a little bit more depth. The market's reaction to the earnings was relatively negative and the stock closed the week around 3% down. Upon further reflection, I actually thought that the earnings were pretty good for the company and the results showed a pathway to the company becoming a high cash flow producing one within the coming years. With the stock price up over 50% within the last year alone, I believe a lot of positive news is already baked into the price and that this is just a temporary break from the relentless march upwards. Netflix has actually really impressed me with some of their statistics like them producing more free cash flow in the last quarter than the four quarters before that combined and also resuming their increases in revenue and various other metrics. Warren Buffett recently did an interview on CNBC regarding Paramount, one of the streaming businesses he owns. He described the streaming business as being one that is pretty terrible for investors, funnily enough. I want to show you this interview so I can tell you why Netflix is nothing like the type of company that he's describing and why it's a much better investment. Other topics Warren Buffett discussed today with Becky Quick in Japan, his stake in Paramount. Listen. It isn't fundamentally that good a business, whether it was distributing, producing movies or, and, and you've got some people that have got deep pockets that aren't going to quit. And the product they're offering people, a chance to watch all those movies, you know, for peanuts and all that. But can they raise prices? We'll find out. But so far, they haven't been able to. They've been able to attract subscribers, but they have attracted them at a terrible price. All right, you gave a whole lot of reasons why not to buy Paramount. Why did you buy it? Well, we'll see what happens. Like Becky, some of you might be wondering why Warren Buffett is even invested in Paramount in the first place if he thinks the streaming business is such a bad one. The most likely answer is that he has caught wind of a potential takeover bid by a larger company such as Amazon or Apple, one that would really benefit from taking Paramount's content and putting it on its own streaming service. Buffett's main gripe with streaming is that it's such a competitive industry. Lots of different companies started their own independent streaming services over the last few years, and all of them have had to have very low prices, i.e. they've all been loss making. Now that easy money is over and interest rates are rising, they're all under pressure to display the fact that they can make money from this venture. Paramount, for example, is increasing its prices. However, there is one company that is already profitable. That's Netflix. Netflix has been profitable for the last few years. And this process was definitely not an easy one, even for Netflix, which was the first streamer on the block. At the time, in 2021-2022, Netflix had to raise its prices whilst all of these other streamers had just released their services and had extremely low prices. That meant that Netflix missed out on a large amount of subscriber growth at the time and also even had negative growth. Now, all of these other smaller streamers have to start doing the same process. If we take the case of Paramount Plus, they've been doing really well in terms of subscriber growth. They've actually been the largest subscriber growth streaming company of 2022. To quote, Paramount Global CEO Bob Backish and Chief Financial Officer Naveen Chopra emphasized repeatedly that 2023 will mark the summit of the company's spending on Paramount Plus and other platforms. So they're effectively reassuring investors here that the amount of money that's going into their services will finally start to go down because it's way too high. Paramount Global acknowledged that the company will have negative free cash flow in 2023, a situation that would have seemed shocking for a media giant the size of Paramount just a few years ago. So when you think about it, Netflix having a massively positive free cash flow and only increasing over the next few years is a pretty good situation to be in, especially when you consider that Paramount Global investors are all used to the company having lots of free cash flow and paying dividends and share buybacks over the years. They're not used to their company being one of these growth, high growth, low profit companies. Paramount is planning to increase the price of its premium Paramount Plus tier with Showtime from $9.99 to $11.99 per month, which seems fairly cheap, but I guarantee that won't be the last price increase that they'll need to do to achieve profitability. Will as many customers be as interested in Paramount when it's $20 per month?
In my opinion, probably not. And can investors hold on while subscriber numbers are going down, but profits are still below zero too? Backish acknowledged that the company hit big headwinds in 2022 and that 2023 will not be a robust year for profits. We are at peak investment in 2023 and Paramount Plus, Backish said. Now that so many streaming companies are trying to achieve profitability all at the same time, I think it's really unlikely that more than two or three of them actually do achieve that. And the rest will have to accept their status as content creators, i.e. companies that produce content and rent out their old content to companies like Netflix, the most popular ones, to display them and accept a fee for that, similar to how things used to work before they all developed their own streaming services. That will only be beneficial for companies like Netflix, in my opinion. Another massive advantage that Netflix has over its competitors is that it is not cannibalizing its legacy business because it doesn't have a legacy business anymore. In fact, it's closing its mail order DVD service and that was never really something that it was contending with anyway. If you look at Paramount, Every time they add new movies to their Paramount Plus streaming service, it means that the amount of DVDs they're selling for those same films are going to go down massively, i.e. they're just moving profits from one area to another, i.e. profits are going from their DVD service, being removed from there, and being put straight into their streaming services. Many other companies face this exact same dilemma. Something that's been a bit of a headwind for Netflix's earnings in recent quarters has been FX rates. So a strengthening dollar throughout 2022 has meant that comparing the earnings and revenue figures for Q1 2023 to Q1 2022 means that they're worse than where they would have been had the FX rate remained the same. However, for this quarter, rates have actually started to get better, i.e. the dollar is weakening a little bit. And if that trend continues, the FX rates will actually be a net positive for Netflix's earnings and many other big tech stocks too for the rest of this year. So I think that is definitely a positive to watch out for. I want to share this article with you guys because I think it gives some really good insights into the earnings report and it also gives some additional information that wasn't in the earnings report too. So Nielsen is a site which compiles all of the shows that Americans are watching and puts them in order of popularity every few weeks. If we look at the share of TV time that people were watching in March 2023 compared to 2022, it was 7.3 compared to 6.6. .6. So Netflix actually increased their share of TV time being watched over the last year or so, whilst all of these other businesses were also competing. So I think Netflix is actually doing a really good job in terms of engagement. What's also interesting is that Netflix has been flatlining on the amount of cash that it's been spending on its content. So for the last three or four years, the content spent has remained relatively flat. And that's while inflation is going up and also revenues are going up. So if we look at a graph of cash content spend compared to revenues, so as a percentage of revenues, it's been declining since 2016. And if this trend keeps up, it gives the company more profits that they can then spend on dividends or share buybacks, hopefully. Netflix's free cash flow figures for this quarter were so impressive that I actually had to check the report again to see if I'd seen it correctly. I think that the estimations for the next few years are really encouraging and if they keep to that schedule then I can see the price of the stock definitely increasing. One way that they are proposing to reach those kind of numbers is via the crackdown on password sharing. Ultimately it's a very controversial move but I do think that it will be beneficial to the company in the long term. They've already trialed it in several countries including Canada and Mexico and if it wasn't successful there they wouldn't be bringing it to other countries at all. They have announced it to begin within the next quarter and I expect there to be some short short term turmoil and bad PR but for the stock to benefit from it in the long term as more subscribers will ultimately join the service.
I must confess to some level of sympathy to Netflix for even having to deal with this password crackdown in the first place. After all, if you look at their competitors, Apple TV or Amazon Prime, the vast majority of people would not be sharing their passwords for those services with their friends in the first place. Maybe their family, but probably not their friends because of the negative consequences. So it's a bit of a conundrum that Netflix will have to dig its way out of. I think in the long term, people will forget that they could get free Netflix effectively and the controversy will die down. But that will be a while. In the meantime, next week is a really exciting week for earnings. Lots of different companies reporting. The ones I'm most excited for personally are Meta and probably Crocs. If you guys enjoyed this video and my thoughts on the earnings of Netflix, give me a like and subscribe and I'll be sure to give you more videos on the same kind of thing for these other companies. Thanks for watching.